But, um, you know, walking is critical. In terms of dietary intake, I mean, I don't, we don't, we don't personally subscribe to either low carb or high carb. Uh, you know, there's definitely people who respond better to high fat diets. There are definitely people who respond better to high carb diets. Uh, we are pretty gung ho about protein itself. I mean, it's filling, it's muscle building, sure. it it keeps you warm even, and all that. Our general general re- recommendation on the most basic way is uh, targeting one gram per pound of body weight. If you're obese, obviously, then you go with your ideal body weight and not your current body weight. Sure. Um, but again, right, if you're 200 pounds and you hit 180 grams of protein, 160 grams of protein, like, don't stress out about it. I mean, you're within 10, 15, even 20%, you're fine, right? It's not like you're going to suddenly shrivel up and, and whatnot, right? <laughs> I mean, just, there's big bodybuilders who take maybe like 150 grams of protein a day. And we're talking about, you know, two 20 years. And, you know, they're fine. And they're much bigger than you and I are and whatnot. So it's, right. it's okay, right? It's not something to stress out about. Other than that, you know, you do need some saturated fats for testosterone production. It, it, you know, it, it has about a 15, 20% impact on it. It's not as big as some paleoers and, and ketogenic dieters say, but it definitely has an influence on it. Sure. And then, yeah, we go straight and, of course, you know, lift heavy. Uh, that, that's, an obvious, that's an obvious implication coming from diet and whatnot too, right? Um, just, just the dietary process and the hormones that it helps release and, and create, right? Sorry, I keep getting these calls. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I mean, you know, just lifting heavy has such a positive impact on, on depression and hormones and all that. Like, I mean, it, it kind of ties into nutrition and diet right there, right? Yeah. And lastly, yep, like I mentioned, sleep is beyond, beyond critical. I mean, we can, it impacts pretty much every single facet of your lifestyle. And the one thing I do want to mention about sleep is that it's not just the number of hours, it's the quality, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, your brain is still awake while you're asleep, right? If someone knocks on the door, you'll hear it. So if you fall asleep with the TV running or some sta- uh, with some static noise that's distracting, I mean, your quality of sleep is going to go down, right? If you, have, if you have external light coming in, quality of sleep is going to go down, right? Ideally, you have blackout curtains or you have near darkness. I mean, if you need a night light and whatnot, this is where I just say, you know, man up. It's time you accept your <laughs> health. Don't need that night light or whatnot, or put it far away so it's not directly hitting your eyes or anything like that. Um, and yeah, and make sure there's no external stimuli. I mean, if you need soothing ocean sounds to fall asleep, that's fine because it's not stimulus, right? It's not uh, trying to take your brain's attention away. But make sure you're actually in quiet, uh, in dark periods, so that your body can actually rest, which is the entire point, right? So. Well, one of the, one of the things I recommend for people is just getting rid of those electromagnetic frequencies around their bed too if they're having trouble recovering at nighttime. So getting rid of the uh, their cell phone charging next to their bed and outlets plugging into things and stuff like that just to kind of aid in that sleep production. Do you recommend that same thing? Um, I honestly don't have any evidence for or against any kind of EMF interference or whatnot. Sure. I, I can see the phone itself, though I know from anecdotal and people is that, you know, it's very distracting. Like, sure. even having the phone around, picking it up to see from messages, emails, whatever. Who Facebooked you know, me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, who liked my, you know, incredibly genius uh, status update <laughs> with my... <laughs> I mean, we're all, we're all narcissistic at the end of the day, and that's fine, right? So, but put away the phone and let your... You know, let your body rest. I mean, I recommend that people who even have problems falling asleep, like med- meditation can be really good for that, right? Sure. I mean, just the act of lying on your back and feeling like energy or whatever, or that your body is falling asleep, is, is fantastic for sleep quality, right? So, yeah, that's my recommendations for that. Now, one other thing I like to look at with sleep is like getting within your sleep cycles, getting in those patterns. You know, so there's, there's research to suggest that most people are within about 10 minutes of a 90 minute sleep cycle. And so, you know, people talk about eight hours all the time and I'm always telling them, you know, get six, otherwise you're on your deathbed, try to get to seven and a half and then try to get to nine. Yeah. I mean, there's arguments about quality and how, you know, melatonin could help be effective from taking it from seven to eight hours, stuff like that. Um, honestly, it's just one of those things where. Uh, again, I'm lucky that I don't need a, a, an alarm clock, right? But people are skipping way too much anyway. They're going to bed way too late. Sure. Uh, my recommendation, again, is just, you know, you keep those lights off. You keep those stimuluses off. You go to sleep. You keep a regular pattern. Of course, that's very important, right? Your body is is an extremely regulated system, right? I mean, one of the cheap ways that people get around jet lag and is to fast, right? So you fast into while you're traveling and whatnot. And when you get to your destination, you don't eat until breakfast. This is, again, if you're a breakfast eater, right? 
And then just the simple act of eating breakfast tells your body that it's morning time and you know, the, the subsequent waterfall of hormonal, you know, cortisol is needed to wake up and p- puts, uh, puts away melatonin production, which is used to go to sleep, stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, patterns and, and habits are pretty damn powerful. Um, so if you're used to sleeping at 12, go to 12, you know, go to sleep at 12. I mean, if you break it once in a while, if you're out with your friends or whatever, you know, it's not the end of the world. Sure. But, yeah, patterns and habits are extremely powerful and definitely adopt that for your sleep. That's interesting. I've been fasting on flights for probably nearly a decade now. And I never I never even knew or thought about that. I I don't experience jet lag except for back when I used to play in a rock band and we would fly overseas and then we would just get really partied out and wasted and then come home. But then that's a hybrid between hangovers and jet lag. So (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, this is like one of those if you read those business magazines or whatever, they talk about this as their trick for resetting your uh, circadian rhythm. Interesting. That's really interesting. Wow. Okay. So you you seem to be a guy full of tons of tips and tricks. We've talked about supplements, sleep, lifestyle, and stuff like that. Any other tips and tricks on how people can maybe not just have success in their workouts or in their their physique, but also in their life? Ooh, that that's heavy. That's, that's a heavy. loaded question. <laughs> you just got really heavy. Uh, um, honestly. <laughs> Uh, uh, my, my, my own viewpoint on everything is not to stress out too much, right? I mean, as long as you're getting your sleep, as long as you're getting your food intake, as long as you're lifting and, and being active, even more than just lifting, right? Being active, uh, the rest of it is just, you know, people get caught up in, in the minute and the mundane, right? Oh, the BCAAs, or I need to do this, or I need to do that. Um, it's too much. I mean, it's exhausting. We live in a relatively... I wouldn't say it actually is stressful, but in our minds, we live in a very stressful time, stressful world, right? Money and this and, and all these other kind of influences. So, uh, I mean, as long as you have the basics covered, it's a Pareto principle, right? And the 80-20 kind of thing. As long as you have your 80 covered, I mean, enjoy your stupid 20, right? And, and indulge in stupid things. I mean, it, if you ever hang out with me, you'll see I eat the na- – like, I make nasty things. I mean, I'm going to a wedding and uh, I'm going to a cottage wedding in – in two weeks, and I'm actually making a seven-pound chocolate bar. I'm making a giant, giant Snickers <laughs> bar. I mean, we're talking about epic, right? I mean, the, just the basic ingredients are going to be like 80 bucks in chocolate and caramels and nougat. <laughs> and stuff. So it, it's kind of like that, right? Like, you got to enjoy your life at the same time. Sure. As long as it's a basis covered, it'll kind of take care of itself. So yeah, That's good. That's my, that's my general uh, tip. The other thing I, I do want to say, uh, and this is relevant just because, you know, I'm in supplements and all that, is that, you know, supplements, while not uh, a panacea, uh, you know, not a solution to everything. Excuse me. Uh, they're very. They can be very potent in terms of specific health contexts, right? I mean, in, in terms of uh, depending on who you are and, and your context, um, they can be quite potent. So my example was, you know, my last week, uh, my last month has been relatively stressful for me. So there is something called rhodiola, which is an adapt adaptogen, and it helps with stress levels. So I was taking that, and now that my stress is mostly gone, you know, I've stopped taking it, and I feel like it helped me cope with it in that specific context, right? So you've got to know what works for when, and if and if it fits that requirement, then it makes a lot of sense to take it. That's fantastic. That's like me and coffee. I have a lot of natural energy. Like, I haven't had coffee today, but if I have coffee and I have some tasks at hand, I am go mode. But if I have it and I have no tasks, I feel like a sense of impending doom. Like the world is going to destroy me, right? He has nowhere to go. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. So this is the premise of your, your book that you guys over at the Examiner created, right? The supplement guide? Yes. It's so, just that individuality? Yeah. So our supplement goals reference, as we're calling it, is basically, you know what? Supplements uh, are abused and are both underrated and overrated, right? So when we talk about athletics and sports performance, you know, supplements are pretty much overrated. You don't really need them. But again, in terms of specific health context, in, ter- in terms of outside of just lifting, right, they, they, they can make a huge difference. And so my favorite example, um, and I've said this a billion times to everybody, is berberine, right? So if you're diabetic, you have to be very careful about your blood sugar levels. And berberine helps you control it. It's as potent as metformin, which is the number one prescription drug for uh, blood sugar levels. And so if you have this knowledge, right, you can apply it to yourself and you can make sense of um, you know, what you need and what you don't need. And, and, and it kind of all plays out of that. So we have maybe like 190 different health goals covered. And depending on your health goals, right, you look at what matters and what doesn't matter. And so when you mentioned ca- coffee, right, so caffeine, for example, increases your blood pressure. 
So if you're somebody already has high blood pressure and you've had a stressful day, right, that information is powerful, right, because you then now stay away from caffeine. If you're going to grab a coffee or tea, you go for a decaf or, or something like that. So uh, it, it makes significant differences in your life knowing which supplement can help with which. And it's actually quite interesting. I mean, uh, we get into stuff like PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, right, and, and also it all can help a lot with that. And you'd have never imagined, right? You get PMS, and uh, I don't know why these my two examples are both female oriented, but <laughs> is also male uh, a situation, right? But you get PMS, and, and this uh, supplement called Vitex Agnus Castus has been proven to work. So all of all of our assessments here are, you know, we're based on when we're talking about glutamine, right? Petri dish versus actual human uh, in vivo testing. All of our conclusions in this reference guide that we've spent like the last two and a half years, kind of coming to. Um, they're all based on actual human studies. Oh, so when you read it, you can be pretty confident that they'll actually work for you and they're not, you know, ancillary, re ancillary related to what you do. Right. It's not like the rat studies we're trying to relate to humans, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, there's, there's every year they, they come out with this rat study that's relevant. You know, it's going to oh, make you muscular. It's going to cure this. to a thousand. Exactly. Yeah. You know, a person's going to live to 500 is already alive today because of this rat study. But then, you know, when they actually try it in humans, it's like, oh, shit. You know, it, I mean, rats are very important. Let me be very clear. Rats are a critical element of studying, especially because they let you do multi-generational kind of studies very quickly. So they're super important. Right. But you have to take it with a very, very, very heavy grain of salt. You know, just as, as many times as it's proven to work from rats to humans, just as many times it's proven to be just an utmost failure from rats to humans. That's fantastic. Where do we find the supplement guide at? Um, I think the easiest way would uh, we'll, we'll give your guys a link from wherever they're watching this uh, video. Um, but the website itself is examine.com. I mean, it's it's an easy to remember domain and whatnot. Um, and and that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, we've sold we've been out now for three weeks as of yesterday, and we've sold over four thousand copies, which is uh, quite a bit. And if you look at our testimonials, right, we've got doctors, we've got PhDs, researchers, nutritionists. Even people who've got their own recipe sites, trainers, pretty much the entire gamut of health and wellness um, have vouched for what we've built. And like I said, you know, we've been at it for two and a half years now. Uh, we've analyzed over 20,000 studies. We have 2,000 plus human studies in our actual reference guide. So, uh, I mean, it's my, it's my baby in some ways, but I'm pretty damn proud of what we've built. And I, and I legitimately think it's, it's very, very useful in terms of, you know, when you're talking about going to GNC and, and busting out your paycheck, right? <laughs> That we would have totally saved you from wasting all that yeah. money. So. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, Saul, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and getting on the call, brother. Yeah, all my pleasure, man.